I'm just about to start, so welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Tomáš Smetana, and I work uh, as a leader of the systems management group uh, in the Red Hat uh, platform engineering. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about the system management, about the uh, uh, technologies we've decided to use for managing our systems, uh, reasons why we did that, uh, explain the concepts. I will explain how these concepts we are trying to put in reality. And I will be talking also about uh, the project named OpenLMI that tries to uh, shelter uh, all these uh, system management things in, in Linux systems. I'll be talking about manageability of the systems. And by the manageability, I mean only the infrastructure that should allow for the low-level management functions themselves. Uh, it's not going to be about any kind of server console or some high-level uh, configuration utilities. It's really just the infrastructure itself and uh, some APIs. Uh, everything I would be talking about is supposed to be uh, integrated into the existing solutions, existing workflows. So don't expect any revolutions today. We will not change uh, any fundamentals of anything. Uh, the system management on Linux today is uh, basically uh, non-existent. We, we don't have any really good system management for Linux systems. The usual way, uh, the most usual way how to manage a Linux system is to SSH onto the box. Uh, change a configuration file, restart a service, reboot the machine. Uh, the administrators who have to uh, maintain or take care of larger networks do have their own set of shell scripts they, that quite often are just variations on the SSH and a for loop. Um, so configuring machines, uh, OK. Uh, this way is really not scalable or not uh, universal in, in any way. Uh, there's, of course, some mm, tools that are trying to uh, improve the situation a bit. So for example, I don't know, Chef or Puppet uh, want to uh, make life easier when it comes to configuration management. So Puppet, for example, can push the configuration file from a central node onto all the managed machines. Uh, however, almost none of these tools is, uh, again, very universal. Uh, Puppet uh, is not that good for, for example, monitoring the remote system. Uh, they bring unwanted dependencies. Again, Puppet is, for example, written in Ruby. Uh, many of the customers don't feel very comfortable running Ruby on their production machines. Um, so this unification is, is something that's very, very much missing now. And of course, uh, there's not just Linux. Maybe you don't know that, but most of the customers uh, are using uh, heterogeneous systems, heterogeneous uh, networks. And many of the uh, newcomers to the Unix world are used to do things differently. For simple tasks, they want simple tool. They won't have uh, pretty user interfaces. They won't have really comfortable tools that would allow them to uh, configure all the aspects of the system uh, using the same approach. Uh, this is not what uh, is that easily uh, achievable with the tools we have right now in Linux. Uh, here's the priorities of what the uh, customers, what the users, identified as being the biggest pain points uh, in managing systems, uh, Linux systems. They want to provision bare metal server. Uh, this is not about Linux, but it's something they want to do from their uh, management tools. So the tools we would provide would have to be able to manage also bare metal server with no operating system running on. They want to configure networks. They want to configure storage. And one of the... Uh, 
uh, important uh, domains is also manage integration with the active directory because, as mentioned, heterogeneous uh, systems are the uh, reality. There actually exists a solution for, uh, that's been designed to address these issues specifically. Uh, it's been in Linux for years, not that uh, widely used, uh, and it's named Web-Based Enterprise Management. It's basically a set of standards maintained by a non-profit organization, Distributed Management Task Force. Uh, Red Hat is a member of this organization, as well as many of the uh, big IT industry players, including Microsoft, IBM, uh, hardware producers like Dell, Cisco, uh, HP, Fujitsu. Um, this standard uh, defines a way how to manage, monitor, um, all the various uh, aspects of the system. You can monitor, you can, you can manage your operating system. You should be able to manage uh, the firmware directly using these uh, standards. You can manage even the uh, uh, Cisco switch, for example, on your network using this set of tools. Uh, they really became uh, kind of standard in the industry. Uh, it's because they're everywhere. You get the unified view of, of uh, all the systems you have uh, in, your, in your network, in your organization. Um, you get the remote API to manage them, so you really have one tool that you can use, that you know, and it would be able managing all the uh, different devices you have, different boxes you have on the network. Uh, since uh, it's been around for some years, uh, we do already have um, models uh, for um, uh, representing the, the usual use cases. So uh, we have standards that, I don't know, describe uh, how to model a network, how to model an operating system, how to model uh, NUMA memory. Uh, these models are part of the standards. Uh, we found out that it's not that easy to map these standard models to our Linux use cases, but sometimes it's doable, and it's got uh, benefits on its own, of course. And even if it's not, uh, we have some guidance on how to create our own models, so we don't have to start from scratch when uh, creating our solutions. The biggest and most important of these standards is named uh, Common information model, uh, common information model, SIM. Basically, it's a data modeling language and a data model itself. Uh, the other important uh, parts of the standards are transport protocol. Usually, it's HTTPS. Uh, there's also uh, definitions of uh, other representations of the model, because if you transfer the data over network, you want to have them encoded in some format. It's usually some kind of XML, so there's also the SIM to XML mappings specified in the standard. And there's many more. There's uh, SOAP-based uh, uh, management uh, standard that's named VSMAN, uh, quite popular in the Windows world. Uh, there's also some remote command line protocol that is uh, not very usable and not quite often implemented very well. Recently, there's been also REST API added to this set of standards. Uh, so even though DMTF has been founded, I don't know, 1992, these models, these standards still evolve. They still try to reflect the reality. They're changing. They're being updated. So uh, we're not stuck with something really old or rigid. Uh, SIM itself is the core of the standard. Everybody who's uh, using um, WebM, no matter what protocol uh, of the standard he chooses, uh, they have to implement the object model on the managed system. Uh, SIM itself is the specification. That means it tells you how to uh, create this uh, representation of the, of the model. But also part of the SIM are the uh, schemas. Uh, schema basically is already the actual set of classes describing something. So SIM model 
the same uh, schema. Uh, first, uh, define some abstract classes, part of the core model, that describe uh, things like a managed device or um, a collection or, uh, I don't know, um, some object, like generic object. Uh, then there is a common model, and it derives from the uh, core model, and it's already focusing on the real-world applications. So core model describes a network device. It describes uh, operating system, or it uh, has a model for uh, baseboard in the, in the computer. So, and everything's modeled in object-oriented manner. So it's really what you, get, what you are used to uh, in other object-oriented systems. The uh, central notion is a class. Class is a data type, structured data type, that consists of properties, methods, qualifiers. There's data types defined for the pro properties, uh, usual ones, uh, scholars, uh, strings, dates. There's also a notion of reference, so something like a pointer in, in uh, the data types. The methods which allow you to perform some action through the through the instance of the of the class can take uh, input output arguments, and there's special uh, special uh, notion of qualifiers that enable you to further characterize the uh, entities of the model. So, for example, I can tell that a class is some association. That means this class actually. Uh, is defining some relationship between other classes. I can tell that a property is a key property, which means this property mm, uniquely identifies the instance of that class. There's, of course, some notion of inheritance. Uh, however, uh, sim doesn't allow for multiple, in um, multiple inheritance. Uh, I've already mentioned a uh, association. Uh, there are special types of class in the models that allow us to model also interaction or, or connection between the, between the classes. So we have associations that can define relationships between multiple classes, but, and there's more types of associations like aggregation and so on. You may find more details uh, if you dive deeply into the uh, standards. Uh, there's also a uh, thing named indications, which is uh, part of sim uh, event model. Indications basically model uh, occurrence of an event in a system. So there is a mechanism for delivering uh, asynchronous messages to the, to the uh, uh, client or to the uh, central node. Okay, I don't know if you can read this. Maybe yes, maybe not. However, this is, this is uh, one page taken from the uh, common model standard. So it describes uh, this one describes an operating system. So the big thing here is a class named operating system with uh, many properties like uh, operating system type, uh, number of users, uh, local date time, uh, I don't know whether it's distributed or not. There's also some methods, uh, in this case reboot or shutdown. Uh, and here's also an example how associations work. So there is a file system class uh, represented in the schema. And I have an association, boot OS from FS, which tells me that this operating system has been booted from this file system. This way, I can really get a very uh, comprehensive, object-oriented model of the whole managed system. Uh, are there any questions so far? By the way, if you would have some questions, don't, don't be afraid to stop me and fire the questions. Um, I've heard one who mentioned that there is, however, no uh, multiple inheritance. Right. Uh, what about the practical limitations caused by that? Are there any doing the modeling which you can uh, tell, for example, you suffer from lagging that possibility? Uh, Yes, we've actually hit some limitations uh, when modeling the storage, I think. But uh, again, as mentioned, we've tried to follow the existing standards who, that actually show you how to uh, 
avoid these, how to, how to overcome these limitations of the model. So it's a limitation, but it's not something fatal. So. Good. So that was the explanation of the basic notions about the uh, acronyms. Uh, this is basically a picture of how these things uh, work in reality, how they're implemented. Uh, this uh, two boxes uh, represent a client system and a managed machine managed system. So the central point on the managed system is uh, the server that you would connect to and, and transfer your requests to get, get the responses from. Uh, it's named Simum, uh, and basically it's really nothing else than, than a uh, server application listening on some network parts. I will get to that uh, uh, later. There's the providers on the managed system. These are the agents, the tiny pieces of code that actually perform the action. Uh, provider is something that uh, goes to a proc file system to find out uh, how much free memory do I have. And then it uh, transfers it back to the simum through some standard interface. Uh, on the client system, again, the, the, uh, there's nothing uh, unusual that you wouldn't expect. Uh, you just need to uh, form your request to uh, follow the standard. So you create some XML with the request, transfer it over uh, HTTPS to the simum, and uh, process the response eventually. And now, in more details about the simum, as mentioned, this is the central point on the managed machine. Uh, it's the uh, object manager running uh, on the server, uh, listening on some well-known ports, and uh, the client uh, had to authenticate themselves in Simon. Uh, the standard defines basic and digest HTTP authentication for this uh, purpose. However, there might be some uh, extensions depending on the Simon implementation. Uh, the important task for the simum is to keep the repository of known classes and uh, also maintain uh, the hierarchy of namespaces. So each class can be put in a particular namespace. Uh, this um, um, allows for things like uh, extending uh, the uh, capabilities for um, uh, authorization, for example. So uh, we can have namespace that's uh, accessible only to a certain set of users. Uh, it also allows for uh, uh, isolation of set of classes that take care of certain domain. So we have namespace where, which contains only classes that configure the simum itself not the rest of the system. Uh, also, the simum interacts with the providers. Uh, so it offloads uh, the requests on the particular provider, look up, looks up which provider should perform which task, and asks him to do that, get the response back. Uh, in Fedora, we have two implementations. Uh, one of them is a uh, small footprint SIM broker, SFCB, uh, part of Sublime project. It's a lightweight, lightweight one. It's been often uh, embedded into firmware and other systems. It's uh, implementing the standard, but it's quite, uh, it's not that feature rich. However, there's also a Pegasus uh, SIM uh, broker. That one is uh, maintained by the open group and is much more uh, capable in terms of features and extensions. However, it's also um, more difficult uh, uh, to uh, set up or, or uh, configure, or at least, <laughs> at least uh, debug. And uh, it's also more intensive on resources. Good. That was Simon. Now to the providers. Providers are the agents that run on the managed system and perform the tasks. Uh, usually a provider 
takes care of certain domains. So we have a provider that manages storage devices or storage itself. Uh, we have a networking uh, provider that takes care of uh, configuration of networking, uh, services, accounts, just usually divided by domain. Uh, physically, they implement it as DSOs, so the simum can load them at runtime. Uh, there's an important uh, mechanism how to tell the simum uh, what classes does a particular provider implement and uh, where do you want to put them, which namespace to put them in. So uh, part of the installation of the simum is a process named registration, which basically uh, does this for you. It tells you, it registers the provider within the simum, uh, telling, telling the simum, provider implements these classes and I want them to be accessible through this namespace. Uh, the uh, communication between simum and provider is also uh, standardized. Uh, this standard is named Common Manage Manageability Programming Interface, CMPI. It's uh, defined by the open group, uh, defined for the C language. However, there are bindings for mm, many other languages. The usual ones you might think of, like Java or Python, exist, and I think they're packaged all in Fedora. Uh, some other languages uh, might not be. I think we don't package Ruby bindings for, for uh, CMPI, for example. However, uh, this allows you to write your provider in whatever language you choose, and it should work okay with uh, every simum that implements the CMPI interface. So if you decide to replace, I don't know, Pegasus with uh, SFCB because it eats too much memory, you can do that. The providers should work uh, with no change. You just need to register them in the new simum. Good. Uh, so that was the managed system. So any questions so far about the things I've talked about. If not, I'll continue to the clients. Uh, the clients uh, basically don't have to do anything else than to uh, form the request. That means encode it to an XML that would be uh, parsable by the simum. This XML format is called XML sim and contains some uh, message with a method call. Uh, the methods are either implemented by the simum. These, uh, these are cont um, called intrinsic. Uh, intrinsic methods are defined by the standard. The usual methods are like enumerate classes, enumerate class instances, or get class instance. These are typically the intrinsic, intrinsic methods. But there can be other methods called extrinsic which uh, the simon doesn't have to implement and will offload uh, their execution to the uh, providers. Uh, there is one powerful mechanism for mm, performing uh, more complex requests. Uh, the standard defines also a special query language. It resembles SQL, so there's select something from something, and this allows you to, to query some uh, more or receiving some, some more mm, complex uh, uh, data or uh, asking some more complex questions to the simum. Uh, the language is uh, uh, CQL, standing for sim query language, and uh, the usual uh, dialect that's been implemented on most of the systems is WQL. It's Windows query language, so it shows where it comes from. Uh, actually, Microsoft has uh, <laughs> has implemented SIM quite deeply into, into their operating systems, and it's been there for quite a long time. Mm. The uh, event model is something I've mentioned briefly when talking about the indications. This is another thing that uh, is important for monitoring of the uh, remote systems. Uh, this is a mechanism how to uh, get asynchronous messages from the simum. 
So uh, you can, for example, uh, instruct uh, Simon to tell you when the memory goes over a certain threshold. You can tell it to alert you when you run out of disk space or something like this. Or just tell you when this job finishes, let me know. Uh, the even model is, uh, or the core, implement, uh, core class for the event model is uh, called uh, an indication. The indication is a mm, class representing occurrence of an event in the system. Uh, so this is class that actually is created when the event happens in the simum. And the client who's interested in uh, being notified about certain kind of event has, uh, again, a special mechanism how to tell it. Uh, it has to subscribe for the indication. The indication subscription uh, takes uh, a filter. So that's something that specifies what kind of events I'm interested in. I want to know when I run out of disk space, might be in the filter. But also a handler. And a handler tells the simum what to do if such an event occurs, where to send the data. So this, in theory, or even in practice, allows you to uh, have a special dedicated uh, box in your network that would take care only of alerts. And anyone can, can tell the simum if something happens, send it to the alert system, and it will act upon that. So the uh, subscriber doesn't necessarily have to be the consumer of the, of the uh, indication of the event. Uh, together, these things uh, actually allow for quite uh, complete management of the system, because we have something for the monitoring, uh, the uh, usual uh, synchronous uh, communication with uh, HTTPS and SimXML allows you to query the system to see what state it is in. Uh, it allows you to perform some actions on the system, reconfigure network, create a partition, mount the file system. And we have uh, asynchronous events that can alert you if something goes wrong. So you have quite a comprehensive uh, uh, tool for mm, uh, whole system management here. So why are not we using that on Linux? And we have it in Linux, really, literally for years. The problem is that it's very incomplete in terms of functionality. So far, the existing solutions, the existing providers were focused mostly on basic monitoring tasks. They were able to provide you just the basic information about the system, about how much free memory is there, and I don't know, what's the host name of the machine. But there was nothing uh, that would allow you to configure the machine remotely. So there were really no configuration through this. Um, also, some of the um, providers were not really well maintained, so they were just outdated, didn't work at all, nobody noticed. And that's why uh, we've started a project uh, named OpenLMI. Uh, stands for Open Linux Management Infrastructure, or Manageability <coughs> Infrastructure. Uh, we are trying to shelter all these uh, SIM and WebM pieces that we have in the Linux world, uh, glue them together, and most importantly, most importantly, uh, fill the gaps. That means write the providers that are necessary for having the complete solution for system management. Uh, we also want to create some better tooling for the administrators. So those who are used to use their uh, uh, shell scripts for uh, managing the networks would have similar but much more convenient tools doing this uh, using a uh, SIM interface or WebM interface. And of course, we'd like to document the Linux specifics of WebM uh, management. And in the future, we would like to also uh, create some mm, a library of tools, scripts, modules that would solve the usual use cases and help people to build their own solutions upon the existing ones and exchange their experience. Um, however, the most important thing that's missing in the uh, Linux today are the providers that would actually do some configuration. 
if you remember one of the first slides, that was the priorities of what the customer, what the users see as the biggest or more, most problematic areas to manage on system. So that was the storage. We have a storage management provider that uh, allows for basic, uh, or basic, now even more advanced uh, management of, of storage devices in the system. Uh, it's based on the Anaconda uh, storage library named Blivet. Uh, it's probably the most complete API we have for storage management in Linux today. You disagree? <laughs> okay, now, at least uh, we haven't found any, any, any better. Uh, it's very installer-centric, so we are now working uh, with the Blivet guys to uh, extend the capabilities of the library to really become uh, more isolated from Anaconda and also to uh, add some functionality like monitoring and, and uh, changing of the configuration. Um, that's why uh, the management uh, provider, uh, storage management provider is written in Python so far. Uh, basically what we do uh, with the uh, storage management is uh, come on to all the providers. We do not want to do the management task or the monitoring uh, right from the provider code. We would rather really uh, rely upon existing APIs and uh, don't uh, try to do too much in the provider itself. And uh, that way we can basically expose the uh, local APIs over the uh, WebM interface. So uh, WebM would become the remote API for the, or remote uh, mm, interface for the local APIs. Uh, this way we hope to avoid some of the mistakes or problems that uh, the previous attempts to solve this uh, same set of issues had, like LinuxConf. LinuxConf was trying to directly change the configuration files on the disk, and it really didn't work well once uh, it was uh, changed also by the user on the system, so it usually stopped working very badly. Therefore, we, we try to rely on the APIs, and if there are not existing, we want uh, or we try to collaborate with the upstream to create ones for us or to complete the functionality that we would miss. Uh, network management, therefore, is uh, uh, based on uh, the network manager. Network manager these days is uh, getting more and more enterprise uh, features. So it's really not the network manager uh, just for laptops. Uh, it's got uh, much better CLI and it's uh, going to get more functionality. I think in the uh, Fedora 18, it can configure bridges uh, or bonding and maybe, maybe, maybe bridging and more of this enterprise grade functionality is going to be implemented in network manager. So network manager is becoming really a good API for, network, for uh, the networking stuff and we will also uh, implement some interface for uh, firewall D in the network provider. Service management, account management, uh, these are tiny but quite useful uh, uh, providers. Uh, so mm, there was no way, uh, there was uh, no reason not to implement these essential tasks. They would have to be there anyway. Uh, power management, again, something that allows you to reboot, halt, or hibernate, or suspend the machine. Uh, software management is basically a YAM uh, WebM interface. So we call YAM from this uh, provider, and you can remotely install, list, install packages, update them, so on. Um, good to mention, uh, one of the uh, important areas uh, for the customers was the integration with Active Directory. Uh, you might have been to the previous presentation by Dmitry Paul. Uh, then there's going to be another one by Step Water. The uh, identity management people are working on this, and they are also creating a provider for the Realm D daemon. Uh, Realm D daemon is uh, a daemon that allows you to uh, enroll your system into Kerberos or Active Directory domain uh, quite seamlessly. So it's going to get a WebM interface as well. And now about the tools for the administrators. Uh, uh, there is a, a shell-like uh, 
environment as a part of the OpenLMI project. It's based on Python, so basically it's just a wrapper of, of uh, Python that includes the important classes for you or important modules for you. It has an interactive mode uh, with um, the user-friendly features on a tab completion, so you can click a tab and it will uh, uh, complete the name of the class for you, for example, so um, quite convenient. Uh, uh, since the um, model or the uh, class definitions uh, contain also documentation of the class and its properties, the simum knows documentation for every particular class and our shell allows you to retrieve this remote documentation so if you connect to a machine, see a class and you don't know what it actually is, you can get a documentation for it right from the command line interface. And uh, it's not just the interactive mode, uh, it's also a, the scripting environment so you can write your own scripts to automate the configuration management tasks with the OpenLMI, uh, with the OpenLMI shell. Good, so that was, uh, that was the theory or part of the theory and the overview. It's by no means uh, complete or mm, I don't know if you didn't get lost in, in the details and, and all the acronyms. Uh, however, if you really wonder what is it really about, then we will have uh, two lab sessions in the meeting point two starting uh, quarter to four p.m. Uh, the first half is going to be about how to use these things, how to uh, manage your machine using SIM from the OpenLMI shell mostly. And the second part, uh, starting uh, 20 after 5 p.m., is going to be uh, for useful for those who are looking at how to extend what we have in Linux. So if you have an... You, write a daemon, you write a service, and you think it might benefit from having such an interface, you may join the session and see how the providers are actually being written, how to write a provider. And here's the sources of the information and also places where you can get all the details I have uh, left out uh, in the presentation. So the MTF site with uh, all the documents about the standards, all the classes, all, all the uh, models standardized, and our OpenLMI project page, uh, where you can see the specifics for the OpenLMI for Linux. Uh, you can see the code, uh, the examples, and also some points how to contact us if you are interested in asking more questions. So, are there any questions now? Yes? Um, so effectively, we're defining APIs for all these things in the operating system. What do you see as the story for API compatibility? Like, could they be different between Red Hat Enterprise Linux releases? Or it, once you define the API for in one of these providers, is it kind of just maintained? OK. You know, I mean, like, let's say you make a service API, right? Well, right now, uh, so obviously, we've changed things yeah. fundamentally in the operating system, and you know, if you, if we make the API very close to System D, well, do we maintain that forever? Uh huh. Yep. Uh, so. Of course, we would like to avoid changing the APIs. Uh, I think there's a way how to version the APIs so you can request certain version of, of the, the objects, I think, uh, or, the implement, or the class. And uh, yeah, we're trying to follow the standards where, wherever possible. So this is something that should help us avoiding these problems because the standards don't change that often. And if they do, it's change of the standard. So it should be reflected in, in the uh, consumers of the API as well. And uh, as for the uh, APIs or the models we design ourselves, yes, it's pretty possible we would have to change them in the future, but we're trying hard to really design them that these changes wouldn't have to be too fundamental or too big. But of course it may happen. Yes, uh, there was another question somewhere. Yep. Um, do you think your 
overlapping functionality with um, other existing services like SNMP, Puppet, um, if we can borrow functionality? Or uh, are you overlapping? Overlapping, yes. Uh, to some extent, we are overlapping because we do configuration, Puppet does configuration, but uh, uh, we do it in quite a different way. For example, Puppet does configuration like uh, just, you know, you have a config file on your central node, push it to that machine, and you basically tell it, I want uh, the configuration to look like this. It's done. The sim, you take a look at the machine, see how it is configured, and say, yes, and this thing I want to be changed. So it's slightly different from Puppet. With SNMP, SNMP, yes, is designed for monitoring, and we do the monitoring. However, SNMP lacks the management features, the configuration features, and basically sim and WebM has been designed as a replacement of uh, SNMP. So we would be probably overlapping with that, but offering many more features, so it's worth the cost. OK? Yes, there is a question. For the shell, it sounds like Microsoft's PowerShell. Do you think that someday we'll be able to manage Microsoft systems, Windows systems? Uh, Windows systems do have, Windows systems do have uh, WebM uh, or SIM uh, interfaces already. So basically, yes, it might be possible. We have to try this. Uh, Microsoft Windows are using different uh, transport protocol. That's a technical detail, but something that we would have to change in the tools because so far I think it uses HTTPS and uh, that SOAP, the VS man, won't work. The XMLs, oh, transport protocols, okay, sorry. Uh, it's using uh, different uh, XMLs basically because uh, they're using VS man, we're using the, the uh, SIM, SIM XML or XML SIM. Uh, other questions? Yep. Follow up. Uh, what, what about the other way around? Can they use uh, existing tools for Windows and other systems to manage Linux uh, afterwards? Probably not out of the box, but eventually, since we're using the standard interface, it should be possible to you know, uh, change the existing tools to, to integrate with, with no no fundamental changes because you know you will probably for for some i have no idea how the enterprise management tools like uh, ibm director looks like for example i know it uses this technology to manage and monitor the boxes but if it would be about uh, feeding it the new morph the new class definitions and tell it this system has these classes that should be mapped to this functionality then it's basically it and we hope that this would at least make it easier for the other tools to be able to, for the existing solutions to be able to connect to, to RHEL, Fedora, Linux. But that's not the immediate goal of the project. No, 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 no. The first, <laughs> the immediate focus is to create something useful that would actually work. That means have something that would be able to change the configuration, doing the monitoring, create the API that could be consumed. Yep. I'm joining us, guys, later. <laughs> uh, okay, you can. Of course, you can create your own model or your mapping from your model to, to the same one. However, you set standard model. So that might be difficult. You would have to find if standard model exists. By standard model, I mean something that's been blessed by DMTF. Okay, so. Okay, um, well. Well. okay, so, so. Th th thanks everyone for listening. We're out of time, so if you have more questions, we can take them to the lobby and discuss that. Thank you. Thank you.